All right, we're uh, now joined in the media center by uh, tonight's second Can-Am dual race winner, Kyle Busch. Oh, there's someone here. No, you're doing a great job if you wanted to, to finish. This is his second dual win in history. Third? Third. Cool. All right. How many at Daytona? Is this like my seventh total? I don't know. Anyways, who's got questions? Did you want to talk a little bit about uh, now you're going to start on the second row with that third place or the third win here? Um, well, actually, I think I get to start on the front row now. So, uh, you know, I did win this race to qualify myself for the fourth starting position. But uh, with our teammate having trouble there at the end of the race, uh, that I, they'll have to go to a backup car. It looks so we'll get our chance to start on the front row. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, definitely a unique opportunity for us and our team. Uh, Joe Gibbs Racing has definitely come down here with more speed this time around in single car in single car stuff. But also uh, in the in the Gator, excuse me, in the Can-Am duels tonight, we also showed we had good speed. Denny had a fast car. Uh, myself and Matt and Carl, we ran up in the top three much of the race, and then pit stops kind of changed the order around a little bit. And uh, there at the end again, you know, with with guys going for. For positions and trying to race a little bit and get themselves a better starting spot it, it got a little bit uh, hectic i'd say so uh for us all good ready for ready for sunday all right we'll open up to questions we'll start with bob i said seven so that's close okay thanks uh, uh bob pockerish espn it would depend on when where chase elliott chooses what line mm -hmm. right as far sure. as whether you get to okay um are you more happy with the win or the more happy that you have your primary car for the daytona 500 um, you know, definitely more happy with the win. This thing seems so loud. Um, you know, definitely happy with the win tonight. That just, you know, anytime you get to go to victory lane, it's just a little bit more special. Um, as of right now, we, we still do have the opportunity to tear up our car and have to start in the back too. So let's, let's not do that. But, um, all in all with, uh, with the way tonight went and with the way their speed's been down here, um, I'm pretty optimistic for Sunday. We're going to go up here to the front to Al and we'll go to Jordan. <clears throat> Yeah, Kyle Al Pearson, all the week. The same question I asked Junior earlier. This race, this weekend, doesn't tell you a thing about the rest of the season because mm -hmm. things will change. It's, how do you approach the rest of the 35 races knowing that this weekend is kind of an anomaly? Um, you just take one of them at a time. You know, that's all you can do. I think Daytona obviously lends itself. Uh, with this restrictor plate package to uh, pack racing, um, you know, we see that quite a bit down here in Daytona. It's always a, a good, exciting race, tends to be anyways, down towards the end. So I wouldn't expect anything less out of the Daytona 500 here on Sunday. But, um, you know, when you leave here on Sunday without a race victory, uh, it's just it's just another race. You know, uh, you just look on to the next one and the next one comes pretty quick. It's about four days later before you're already at the next venue. So, um, you know, with Atlanta and and then the West Coast swing coming up, you know, it's, things tend to get going pretty quick. And um, you, after about five, six, seven, eight races, definitely you start to see where you're at, where your season is, and where your competition is and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we focus a, a lot more on those races throughout our whole off season than we do uh, Daytona. But you, you still want to win here, of course. We go to Jordan and then to Mike. Jordan Bianchi, SBNation.com. Um, after the first duel, Denny said that because he didn't have a teammate, you know, it was kind of inevitable that Earnhardt was going to pass him. Do you, I mean, I don't know if you saw it or not, but it, do you feel like the Toyotas get together and work together like they did tonight, that you, you have something for the 88? Um, yeah, I mean, you definitely have a better opportunity when you're able to have cars behind you that are willing to do whatever you're going to do in order to make a move for the lead. You know, uh, there towards the end of the race, I wasn't sure if, uh, if Matt was protecting me or you know if, or if he was trying to get the lead but there was a lot of back and forth there was a lot of gaps kind of opened up in order to try to get a run on the guy in front of you um so you know it was it was definitely uh, i think the 48 was behind him so he was obviously trying to make some moves and do some things um you know with with two teammates though it tends to get a little bit easier but it's so hard to get a big enough run on the leader and to time it all exactly perfect uh, to get the lead over that guy that, you know, you, you can see the leader still be able to block pretty well. So I think with the dual races, though, you see everything a lot slower and runs aren't as big than you'll see in the Daytona 500 because you'll have twice the amount of cars, essentially. All right, we'll go to Mike next, and then we'll go upstairs to the press box. 
Mike Henry, USA Today. Uh, Kyle, your cars and really all of Gibbs' cars have been great down here. You got three practices left. Do uh, you think you'll be in all those and, and, and kind of what's left to work on? Um, I think for us, um, I'd like to get in the pack, but um, you know, I need a, a heat of the day afternoon session where the temps are warmer, and I don't know that we'll see that enough tomorrow to get out there on the racetrack in a pack style draft. But um, our guys are going to go through um, the car tonight and tomorrow and get the engine swapped over and all that stuff, and we'll be on track tomorrow for some practices just to shake it all down, make sure our heights are all right, make sure there's no leaks and things like that, and then we're going to sit Saturday out. So. We're really going to have limited time left um, in order to get ourselves in a pack, and we really don't want to take that chance uh, to tear up our race car. But um, we know we've got a good enough piece and something that's uh, that's handling and driving well enough that uh, anything that's thrown at us on Sunday during the race, we should be able to overcome. We'll go up to the press box now. Bruce Martin with Speed Sport Magazine and Autosport. <clears throat> Did you anticipate what was going to happen behind you? And had that not happened, was your plan to just pretty much out horsepower them to the line? <laughs> um, well, my plan was to just have everybody stay single file and we just take the checkered flag, but they didn't seem the same thing I did. So um, they all started kind of jockeying for position back there. I guess the 13 ran out of gas uh, and kind of got things mixed up a little bit more, which pulled the pack off of me and I had a huge lead. And when that happened, I thought I was a sitting duck. I thought it was over for me. You know, I was just going to get freight trained by those guys when they caught back up to me. But they started gaining on me so slow that it really wasn't happening as fast as I expected it to. And then when they got closer to me, that's when the, the big gap closed, you know, when they really sucked up on me. That's when it, it shocked me that it was so late. And by then, they didn't have enough of a run to make a move. So I was able to protect that spot still coming to the line for the white and then uh, after that, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know if McMurray was dragging brake to try to get another gap on me or if Jimmy was to his outside already and he just kind of turned up on him, but they just started crashing in my mirror. So at that point, I, I knew it was over. We'll go to Nate next. <clears throat> uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Kyle, uh, impressive win, but only half the field that you're going to face Sunday. Did you watch the first race tonight? And if so, do you, do you have any thoughts on sizing up the competition there? Yeah, no doubt. I definitely watched the first one for sure. Um, I definitely saw, I thought Denny was pretty good. Uh, I thought him and, and Wheeler pulled out a, a good pit stop there in order to get themselves up front, get the lead. But what was interesting was coming to pit road. I think he was about eighth in line and they called him into pit and he skipped a lap uh, of pitting and was able to circle around and come back in, in into pit road right behind the 88 on his tail. So uh, he jumped eight cars in line, you know, and just his pit strategy and the way he thought about it. So that was good to see. Um, from there, you know, the 88 has some speed, definitely, but uh, I think there were some opportunities that Denny kind of let the 88 have him and um, wasn't wasn't able to put a big enough block on him or something like that to hold the lead. Jay Busby, Yahoo Sports. Kyle, obviously, you came through very well tonight. Your car is just fine. Your teammate and other guys are going to back up cars. As a driver, mm. come on, man. As a driver, how... Uh, how difficult is it to adjust to that uh, new car, you know, on a short notice, on a 48-hour notice, things like that? Uh, it's not too bad. All these cars are, are built pretty close. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of sister cars and, and things like that that they build two, three, four at a time. And uh, right back to back, they're all the same sequence and chassis numbers, basically. So um, our seats, you know, the way we do our seats nowadays with the port inserts and things like that, they're very repeatable. And so, um, you know, just being able to go out there and, and have the opportunity to at least hit the racetrack one more time, that's really good for everybody. You know, if it was the last lap of practice on Saturday and you had to start the race on Sunday with no laps on it, that's a lot tougher. But, um, you know, the guys were going to have their, their hands full anyway, swapping motors and doing all kinds of other stuff to get prepared for, uh, for the Sunday race. Um, and now it's – you. you pull a car out of the trailer you still got to do the motor swap and all that stuff to that car so um it's just a little bit of added work for the guys but uh it's not too bad too bad do we have any additional questions all right kyle congratulations oh. you want it go for it yeah. uh, jared hold on foxsports.com jared turner uh kyle do you feel like this track owes you anything after what happened here last year no i don't think so you know there's been a lot of guys that maybe have thought that or maybe have discarded that that theory over the years and I've kind of discarded it you know I don't I don't think uh you're ever owed anything I think certain things just come back through cycle 
you know, um, I don't, I don't necessarily, I can't think of an example exactly, but you know, there may be times where you're at a racetrack and you're just, you're horrible at it. You know, you, you suck, you suck, you suck, or, you know, you, you some close, you come so close to winning a particular race and then boom, it's just taken out from underneath you. But then a few years later you win it and you kind of feel a little bit of redemption about it. Um, you know, I, I think for me, I don't necessarily feel any redemption tonight, but, uh, you know, I think if, if I could end up in victory lane on Sunday, then, uh, I certainly think it would kind of come full circle essentially, you know, so, uh, I'd love to have that happen, but uh, I'm not expecting anything from the racetrack or the racing gods to, to make that happen. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Congratulations yep. and good luck on Sunday.